Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection podcast. And today is a solo episode and I have a topic I want to dive into. But first, here are some ways that you can help support the podcast. First is my one-on-one online coaching service. Uh, if you're somebody who, you know, you've been training for a little while and maybe your results have slowed down, or maybe you just want to take that next step with your training and nutrition, uh, then this is going to be for you. Uh, ideally looking for, again, people who have been training for a couple of years, uh, you're looking to build some muscle, lose some body fat, and really just get a better understanding of how all these things work out and just learn a better way to go about fat loss and building muscle. And so you can sustain that long-term, right? That's a, that's a big thing that I really try to work on there. Also, I feel like you're a good fit. If you're somebody who, you know, maybe you, you have like listened to kind of the mainstream, like fitness advice, and you still just, just cannot see the results that you think you should for the amount of work that you're putting in. Um, if this is you, uh, the link for that uh, to have a conversation of, hey, to find out if it's for you or not, um, and just to find out a little bit more about the service, uh, the link for that is in the show notes. Uh, next, um, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at jeffh91 underscore. Uh, again, there, I just put out way more content um, and whatnot there with that. And then lastly, if you could rate and leave a review on the podcast, uh, that obviously helps people see more of it helps people know that uh, this is quality fitness information and that they can get uh, the information that they need here. So if you could just take a few minutes to rate and leave a review, uh, it would be very helpful and I appreciate it. So let's dive into the topic now. So what I want to go over today are three ways to make your muscle building workouts more efficient and effective. Um, you know, I think that's really ultimately what we're trying to do when we when we go to the gym. We want to make sure that the time that we are spending in the gym is used wisely. Um, so that way you're not wasting any time in the gym. Like, again, I think that's where most people want to end up is making sure that, that they're being efficient and effective as, as possible. Because again, we don't have, nobody has hours and hours to dedicate to the gym. If you have a full-time job, you know, maybe you have a family, you have other social ob obligations, relationships, um, work obligations, just other things that you have to do, right? Nobody has a crazy amount of time to, to dedicate. So we want to, we want to try to get very effective with our training. That's going to allow you to get more out of each set, each rep and each workout. So if you are this way though, where you're working hard and, and not building muscles, you think you should, you might just be doing a bunch of stuff that like, isn't great for building muscle, even though you're working hard. I think that's a big mistake people make is they, they equate working hard with seeing results. And that's not always going to be the case. You need to make sure that you're working on the, the right things. And sometimes just getting into it. And even though it's, it might not be the best, that's always going to be better than just not, not doing it. Right. And, and I think over time you get better at this. This is a big uh, thing that I talk about with clients all the time is, you know, you will get better at this over time. Um, you know, your first fat loss phase isn't going to be your best. Your first building phase isn't going to be your best. You get better at it over time. And same thing with the workouts too, you know, over time, we want to continue to get better and better and more efficient at them and effective. And again, you do that by putting in the reps and it, there is sort of an art to it. So I, I think that this, what I'm about to go over today will be really helpful in getting you closer to that a goal of being more effective and efficient. Again, remember that there is an art to working out and, and building muscle. There's, um, and, and, and you, it takes time to get your craft down, but so long as you're practicing it and you're, and you're have an open mind of always trying to get better and finding ways to be more efficient and optimal and effective, you're going to be in a good position there. So just some things that like could potentially happen if you don't make your workouts more effective and efficient would be, you just kind of waste your time. You know, there's there, you could be doing other things, whether that be working on your nutrition, uh, maybe building relationships, other things are going to bring quality that are going to improve your quality of life. And so, you know, if we, we waste time in the gym where we're just doing a lot of, a lot of training, but not seeing the results we want again, that's just time wasted. We all have a limited amount of time. And so it's important that we use that time wisely. Uh, and, and again, you're putting in work for little to no results. So you're, you're putting in the work. So you might as well figure out a way to be more effective with that. Um, again, we don't want to, we don't want to waste time, but another big thing here too, is you could be doing a lot of work and you're just kind of adding unnecessary fatigue that is going to hinder your body's ability to build muscle as well. Right. So you could be doing a lot of things that end up just 
you know, increasing injury risk, increasing training fatigue, and then just fatigue overall, again, is going to be something where your body's going to have a much tougher time building muscle. Cause again, it only has so many resources available and that's energy and time, whatnot, doing things that aren't as effective. So that's really going to be the big downsides here of not having effective and efficient training um, when it comes to building muscle. I know I used to do this a ton. Like I used to go to the gym. I would spend hours at the gym. Um, and I guarantee you most, if not all of that training was pretty unproductive. Uh, so it's, and, and you know, it was very frustrating to be spending all that time in the gym and just really not be seeing the, the results that I wanted. Again, at the beginning, when you initially get started with it, it's like, you're going to see results because you're doing, you're going from doing nothing to doing something and that's going to help. But there just comes that point where you just, things slow down. And then, uh, I, I think the, the, alt the, first place people want to go to is just adding more, right? And again, that's not always the the choice that we want to, we want to find a ways to be more effective and efficient with, with what we're already doing. Um, but yeah, I used to waste a ton of time in the gym and really what would happen is, you know, just frustration, burnout, um, injury, injury risk, uh, or injury increase. I remember I had a shoulder inj injury for a while. And again, I think that just really came down to just poor recovery and, and again, not being effective and efficient in my, in my training. So let's dive into the three things, the three ways to make your training more effective and efficient. First, make sure you taking, you are taking the target muscle close to failure in your set. You know, you might be working hard in your training, um, but you're not taking the target muscle close to failure. You might be stressing your cardiovascular system more than your target muscle. And so Again, you just because you're sweating or your heart rate's up, that doesn't mean that that's great for building muscle. That's a big mistake that people make with their training as they equate working hard and sweating and stuff with with progress. And, you know, I do think it's good to get uncomfortable, but we can't, you have to be careful with just going after the burn and like the sweat and getting your heart rate up and, it, and, and training feeling super hard. A lot of times when this happens, this, you know, you'll see this a lot in like, you know, kind of like group style classes where it, it's more about like just working hard. And it's not really about like how much weight you're, you're lifting, or are you stimulating the muscles that you should be? And you end up stressing your cardiovascular system more than your target muscle. Um, and again, what that's going to show up as is you're just going to feel you're again, you're going to get that feeling of working hard, but you're not taking the muscle close to failure like you need to. And that's really what's going to build muscle is taking that target muscle and taking the muscle, a muscle close to, to failure. Um, and again, you don't have to take it to failure. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about failure, you can watch my watch or listen to my last episode with Martin Rafalo. Uh, he dove into the research on training to failure and, um, some things you need to pay attention to there. Um, another thing that could be happening here potentially is your technique is poor and you're focused just too much on how much weight you are doing and you end up targeting other muscle groups or joints and tendons when you're doing this. So you have the person, you have one, one set of person that is doing, they're working hard, probably not, the weight's probably not heavy enough. And it's more about just stress. It's more about just feeling the burn, feeling the sweat, getting your heart rate up. And with them, the, the, the problem there is they're targeting the cardiovascular system or the target muscle. Then you have this other person that they focus so much on how much weight that they're lifting and technique breaks down and you end up targeting and stressing other muscle groups and joints slash tendons that should be resting during that time. Uh, so what happens there is like maybe certain muscle groups get overused and, or again, joints, tendons that really shouldn't be taking the bulk of it end up getting hit. And, and that's going to add fatigue. But again, we're not taking the muscle, the actual target muscle close to failure. So you're not going to build muscle again, you might grow a little bit, but there's just going to be that point to where things kind of slow down and you don't see the results that you should be for how hard you are working in the gym. So that's, that's the other side, right? We have those, those two kind of um, people there with that. So a good rule of thumb is once your reps start to slow down. So a good rule of thumb here is once you, once your reps start to slow down, you are getting close enough to failure here. So, and, and you, and you feel it, you know, in, in that target muscle. So once things slow down and uh, you know, you're doing a bench, let's just give a bench press example. You're doing a bench press, you, you're you pressing up. And then as you come down, uh, sorry, not as you come down, as you come back up, you know, you, things really start to kind of slow down. You're getting pretty close to failure there at that point. Um, so yeah, so that that's a good rule of thumb there. So again, if you're somebody that you end up stressing your cardiovascular system more and you're just working harder, but you don't really feel it in the target muscle, again, with that, you probably want to add some weight and really focus on doing that. And then if you're somebody who just adds 
do much weight and other muscle groups or joints tend to take over, you might want to drop down and, and really think about like slowing down um, with your training and um, again, feeling it more in the target muscle. You know, there's times when you can push to failure and there are times when you might want to stop once things slow down. And again, over time, you'll start to figure out when when that is. And maybe certain parts of your training phase, you push it a little bit more. And then other times you back off just a little bit um, as, as well, right? Maybe later in the training phase, you're going to push harder. And then beginning of the training phase, you're going to, you know, leave a little, uh, leave some reps in, in the tank there. So, that, so that's the first thing. Make sure you're taking the target muscle close to failure in your set. And that's going to guarantee that you are um, going to be more, efficient and effective with your training because what's going to happen on the flip side here is if you aren't doing that you're going to be doing a lot of work and you're going to be leaving results on the table uh, so again that's just your classic doing a lot of work but not getting the results you want um, so again we have to be careful with that right because again that just means our training is going to be less effective and, and efficient because uh, it's it's both right because you're spending more time doing stuff and you're not seeing the results you want so this is where a lot of times people feel like they have to do tons and tons of sets in their training and really it just comes down to they're not, their quality within each set is not there and they're staying too far away from failure. So you end up having to do more training to elicit the same result as somebody who gets closer to failure. And again, there's that fine line and it's an art where, you know, maybe the, again, we're not always trying to go to failure. So don't think that this means you have to go to failure every single time. We There are times where we do need to keep a little bit in the tank, otherwise Fatigue will be way too high, um, and, and that will obviously hurt muscle growth and increase your injury risk as well. So there's, again, over time, you figure out how to do this better, and there's an art to it, and again, you get better at it over time. So next thing we want to do is we want to keep most of our training in the 6 to 15 rep range. So there's, you know, any anything from about 5 to 30 reps per set is going to be, uh, it has been shown in research to help, you know, to help to build muscle. Now, in saying that, there's probably a range that's going to be a little bit better. Um, we can we can probably tighten that range up even more as well. So anything south of five-ish reps is fine. So again, if you have maybe one or two reps sets here or there where you fall under five reps, no big deal. However, if you have too much of your training there, you're likely leaving muscle growth on the table just because you're not getting enough tension um, to, to build muscle, right? You're just, it, it's just not enough volume in order to build muscle it's just uh so in, in about five reps is where you're going to see that that pop up so and this type of training just is going to inherently be a little bit more it's going to have a little bit of a higher injury risk associated with it as well too because you're doing heavy loads as well but again the big thing here is if you go south of five reps again if you go four reps it's not like you're not building any muscle at all um but again the tension might not just be enough to really see a ton of muscle growth and we can be a little bit more effective with our, our sets here, um, to, to build more muscle. Um, so anything south of five, of five reps, and then if too much training is north of 15 reps, you would be better off adding some weight and going south of 15 reps. So again, what happens here with going, you know, higher than 15 reps is that you will see, you can see muscle growth again, going, you know, upwards of 30 reps but the problem is that type of training just sucks for one so people you know it's that's not fun training like if you actually take the target muscle close to failure going over 15 reps it's just like that training just sucks right it just burns it just doesn't feel good um it's, it's hard right and that's where the problem also lies is that you likely need to get a little bit close like you again we know it's important to get close to failure to build muscle but with this type of training you really have to get close to failure like we're talking you know within one or two rir all the time um and because of that, that type of training sucks. So it's also harder to get closer to failure, even though it is more important to do that. Okay. So that that's why this type of training likely isn't going to be the most ideal. And so also with that, the higher, the more reps you do in a set, you know, it is because it's just higher training volume, you're doing more stuff. It is going to be more fatiguing as well. Um, so you probably are adding a little bit more training fatigue as well uh, to this, to, to the situation. Again, when you have more training fatigue, uh, that is going to hurt muscle growth when it's too high and it could increase your injury risk as well too. So that's where we fall within that six to 15 rep range is likely going to be the most ideal um, to make your training as effective, um, efficient and effective as you can. And again, that's just because, you know, the weight's heavy enough, right? To where it's not super light 
Um, but it's not too heavy to where then you fall s- south of the five reps. And we know that again, um, that could put a little bit more stress on the joints and tendons and it's just not enough tension to build muscle. And then anything, and then we go all the way up to 15 reps because anything North of that. And again, this is like, this isn't a hard cutoff, right? It's, it's, it's around there six to 15 reps, give or take a little bit, anything North of that, you know, that type of training just sucks. It is a little bit higher training volume. So there's a little bit more fatigue involved with it. And you really have to push yourself close to failure. And, and, and that just sucks, right? It's just very hard to do that because that type of training sucks. So that's why, you know, with online clients, six to 15 reps is going to be where we want to spend most of our, our training um, when we're trying to build muscle. Uh, so the bros were kind of right there where, you know, the eight to 12 rep range, like that's p- pretty solid and going to be pretty safe. Again, there's certain times where maybe you go a little bit outside of it. Um, again, this isn't a hard cutoff, like you have to do this, but we want to make sure most of our training is within that, that six to 15 rep range. And some exercises are going to be better than others in certain rep ranges, right? Like for example, back squat, probably going to be better in the, the six to 10 rep range rather than the, than the 10 to 15 Dumbbell lateral raise is probably going to be a little bit better in like the 10 to 15 rep range versus like the, the six to eight, six to 10 rep range. Um, so something to just think about there with that. Uh, so again, if we go outside of these rep ranges, it's not that it's, it's not that you're not going to build any muscle. Okay. Um, same thing with not taking your muscle close to failure. You're still going to build some muscle, but Again, with this, we can just make our training more effective and efficient. You're going to, you're going to save more time. And again, every rep and set that you do is going to be more effective. So again, if you fall outside of these rep range, it's not like you're not going to build muscle again. It's just, we can save more time and we can get you to be more efficient and and effective during your training. Um, And I think that's what we are aiming for here. So again, it's, you know, all this is, if you're, you know, I don't want to paint the picture that if you go outside of the 15, uh, outside of 15 reps, you're just screwed. Right. Um, cause you're not, but again, we can just be more effective being in this, in the six to 15 rep range. Next is going to be, don't go higher than eight to 10 sets for each muscle group in one training session. So studies show that once you get past about eight to 10 sets per muscle group in one session, your quality starts to suffer. Okay. So there's this kind of inverted U where, you know, you do, the more volume you do, it's going to be better for muscle growth. But then you get to that tipping point and anything on the other side of that invert of, of that, any, any more sets than that per workout ends up being like, you're just, you're putting in a lot of extra work for not as much return on your investment. There's diminishing returns. Okay. Um, so you're going to be putting in extra work and you're going to be seeing like less muscle growth. Again, not that you're all of a sudden going to reach this, this point, And then all of a sudden you get to sets 11 and 12. And then all of a sudden you don't see any muscle growth. You still will see some, but for every extra amount that you're doing, you're going to see less, uh, return on your investment there essentially. So, um, and again, this eight to 10, this eight to 10 sets per workout, isn't a hard cutoff. Again, there's going to be some individual, uh, variants in this where some people might, might be six to eight for some people it might be 12 to 15. It, it just really depends. Right. Um, but a good rule of thumb there is, is eight to 10 and only go over that on an as needed basis. But once you kind of go past that eight to 10, it's like, again, you're, you're putting in extra work and it, it starts to become more drunk junk volume at that point. So you're just better off stopping and, not doing more because again, now, once we get past that eight to 10, it's like, you're going to be putting in more time, but it's not going to be effective. Right. So then that efficiency and effectiveness goes down, um, as you go further than that. And again, this is a very common thing that you'll see here where people just try to do more and more training volume thinking that, Hey, I'm not seeing the most growth I want. I just need to do more and more. And that's where you start to run into issues. So, and, and the other thing here too, is this, if you feel like you have to do more than eight to 10 sets for one muscle group in a training session, you likely aren't following the first two things I talked about, right? You're likely not going close to fa- fairly close to failure in your uh, training sessions or in your, in your sets. And you're likely going outside of this, this rep, that, that uh, rep range that we want to be in. Um, so, yeah. So again, it's just all about being uh, effective. Like we want to increase that effectiveness and the uh, efficiency of the training. What I'll say here on two, what I'll say on this too, is if you are somebody who maybe you're doing currently like three to six sets per, per muscle group, per workout, don't go straight into eight to 10. It's not like eight to 10 is going to be like that magic amount that you need to hit and everything's going to be perfect. You do want to work your way up to it. 
you know, so, so solely increase based on your progress and recovery. Um, so those are, those are the three main things. I did want to add one bonus one in here. And this bonus one is going to be improving your exercise selection. Uh, I think this is one that you can really make your workouts more effective and efficient by improving the exercises that you choose. And this can come down to just choosing better exercises in general, but also making sure you're not being super repetitive or redundant with exercise choices. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you'll see people for their chest workout, do uh, regular chest, they'll do barbell flat press and they'll do dumbbell chest press. And then they'll do a, a regular machine chest press, and then they'll do an incline and then an incline machine. So they'll just do all these exercises and just to get more training volume in. And they end up doing like exercises that are fairly redundant and you'd be better off switching it off. Another big one is back where a lot of times with back training people, the way they go about their back training, they end up doing like a lot of like rear delt and upper back type training and they don't really hit their um, lats or, you know, again, you see like, you see people when they do, they'll, they'll hit like the lat machine, they'll hit the lat pull down, then they'll do neutral grip lat pull down, then they'll do underhand lat pull down. It's like, you're just doing a lot of redundant exercises, right? So that's one main issue there with that is, is make sure with your training that you're not doing exercises that are redundant. And again, I have a podcast and a blog on both of this, you know, exercises that you want to choose or movements that you want to choose, right? Not necessarily exercises, but movements that are, are going to limit that redundancy. Um, and I think that's episode 171 and episode 173. I did upper body and lower body in that, in those episodes, but we also want to improve our muscle building exercises as well. So some exercises that come to mind are like conventional deadlifts, um, rack pulls, um, you know, just certain machines that likely aren't going to be great, you know, uh, a leg press machine, that vertical like leg press where you're like laying down and pushing up, you know, probably not going to be the greatest there. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be, you know, improving your, your selections there are, are going to be, uh, super important. Um, and just finding exercises that really hit the target muscle best for you. Uh, and also to ex doing exercises that again, maybe don't, just aren't good for you. Right. So like, for example, let's take the back squat. Maybe that's just not a good exercise for you. You don't really feel it anywhere, you know? And again, for you, that's not going to be an exercise we want to do, but if you listen to everybody, it's like, Oh, you got a bench deadlift and squat. But again, maybe those aren't good exercises for you and you find exercises that are better for you. Um, so that's another way that you can improve your exercise selection is find exercises that work best for you. So that was a little bonus one there. Um, again, just to sum it up, we have make sure you're taking the target muscle close to failure in your set. And again, if you go outside of that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not building any muscle. It's just, again, we can make our workouts more effective and efficient by doing that. We can get away with doing less. Keep most of your training in the six to 15 rep range. Again, if you go slightly outside of it, no big deal. It's not like you're not going to build any muscle. We could just be more effective by training within that six to 15 rep range. Don't go higher than eight to 10 sets for each muscle group in one session. Some people might have to go a little bit higher than that. Some people might not. It just depends. And then lastly, improve your exercise selection. And this is going to come down to redundancy and just choosing better exercises that fit you best as well. So hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I will see you guys next week.